welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today we're taking a look at the white deck that completed the color challenge with seven wins. Okay, we had a slightly spicy elf deck with a pause for reflection in it, and the mono black deck was exciting, but mono white, it also tore up the pro tour, and it's, it's uh, I think vanilla is the word that comes to mind. Yes, vanilla. Um, some good creatures, some very strong threats, ways to make them bigger, and a couple cards that remove things out of the way. So, uh, basically, yeah, run them over. That's, that, that's what got to seven wins. This, um, this one succeeded before the Pro Tour, but the deck, I believe, is very similar to one that also did very well in a Magic Online event. Four Dauntless Bodyguards, four Sky Marcher Aspirant, four Snubhorn Sentry, four Legion's Landing, four Vanguards, four Knight of Grace, four Marshals, four Benalias, two Tribunals, two, two Ajani's, and four Loxodons. Could have also just been four Tribunals as well. I would have weird draws where I draw three Tribunals and have nothing to target with it um, because I didn't put enough pressure on the board and the Jeskai Control player was fid fidgeting around. So, two Tribunals, two Ajani's. I guess. And then we have 20 planes. Very straightforward. Uh, not a lot to be said. If you wanted to build a sideboard, cards like Takatli Honor Guard would be very nice. Go back and watch the Ellen Bogan uh, Pro Tour winning video and see some of the sideboard choices over there. Baffling End and Conclave Tribunal would be other interesting choices. If you don't want to use the Red Splash at all, um, then yeah, there's not a lot else to be too concerned with. Cards I'm not running. Uh, let's see. I think it mostly speaks for itself, although a lot of people run Healer's Hawk instead of Knight of Grace, at least in the Pro Tour situation. And there's also the version, the package with the Leonin Vanguard and Ajani's Pride Mate. Honestly, I could have been totally down for trying that, and it might be better. I feel like these creatures as presented have a bit more stats in your Knight of Grace and your Snubhorn Sentry. They just get a little bigger, reduce Chain Whirler vulnerabilities a tiny bit, although obviously if that were the high priority you just wouldn't play this deck. And yeah, there isn't as much evasion in this version, which I think is the biggest loss. Not having a Healer's Hawk in your life or a Rustwing Falcon in your life can sometimes make it hard to get the last bits of damage through. But still, this deck cruised to the seven victories. Uh, I didn't have to try twice. It was a one and done. So let's take it out and play it. See how it goes. All right, we are in a best of one get to seven event. This hand has a very nice curve. We are on the draw. Uh, Aspirant, Knight of Grace, Vanilish Marshal, History of Benalia. Why wouldn't you keep this? If this is your deck, this is your party. Opponent opens on a Watery Grave. Most popular deck running that right now seems to be a Disinformation Campaign Doom Whisperer build. But let's see what else happens. It's blue on black. Tears on a river. Push on a shove. Don't mean much. Thought Erasure can break up our curve nastily. Taking the Knight of Grace would take a little bit of the pressure off. We also have to watch out for Golden Demise, Ritual of Soot. Frustrating cards to play against as the white deck. But if the opponent stumbles on any of that, they could be dead before they get to do what they want to do. This is where going first is really important for them. Yeah, I would also pick that Knight of Grace, and it's a good pick because it's the only two drop. It's also a hard one to deal with without a sweeper. And Nebraska's Contempt gets put in the graveyard, which implies to me our opponent may have mana concerns. We do draw a playable card, and now the Sky Marcher can swing in. All right, they're passing the turn. Well, this turn is interesting because we can try to pump our team with the Loxodon. We can also, and if we're going to do that, we'd want to play a Snubhorn Sentry first. We can also play a History of Benalia or a Marshal. 
Honestly, it looks like a counter spell over here. I'm going to see if the Snubhorn resolves. If it does, I'll go for the Loxodon, which could result in a counter spell. But at least I still have these creatures back in my hand for next time. Hmm. Though actually... Yeah, counter this, then Ritual Soot. I still have a Sky Marcher. I guess if they have a counter, we want to get it out of the hand. Or do I just want to punish them? I think... Hmm. When to play around counter magic is in an interesting call, but I think in this case, I'm going to play around it. Instead of playing the Loxodon, I'm going to bash for four and just try to punish them for holding up counter magic and for not doing anything about the sentry rather than throw them a Loxodon and let them basically gain four life because I wouldn't be attacking with these. They may also need the Surveil. Early on, they binned to Vraska's Contempt, which could be because they know that Vraska's Contempt is tough to find a good target for, or it could be because they need land. So perhaps they were counting on that Surveil to help them hit land drops. And here's a Discovery. So possibly getting rewarded for playing around Counter Magic since our opponent's now playing a Sorcery Speed Surveil card and taking the shields down. There's a Sinister Sabotage going to the graveyard, implying our, well, now we definitely know that these are in the deck. They usually are in this brand of deck, which is why it makes it a pretty solid bet to play around. And now, with my opponent tapped this low, we could play the Venerated Loxodon and Super Pump the team. Um, another thing that that does do is insulate a bit from Ritual of Soot because a bodyguard can protect another creature and Venerated Loxodon survives Ritual of Soot. And I like that. I like all of that quite a bit. So, okay, we'll play another Dauntless Bodyguard. This one will defend the Snubhorn Sentry. We'll play the Venerated Loxodon. This will pump the squad. So we're well defended from Rituals, so Golden Demise still sweeps up three of them. But even then, they're going to turn around and take a lot of damage. And if the opponent does play something like a Doom Whisperer, they will still take a lot of damage as well. So there's the Ritual. Here comes the Bodyguarding. So all of these will survive. Ritual of Soot blows up nothing, feels bad. All right, let's drop the Marshal. While we know we can get a nice big hit in with the Marshal. Knocking the opponent to three, making just about anything a potentially lethal threat. If there's a second Ritual of Soot, the Loxodon can finish the job. And the opponent will scoop this one up. Okay, here we are. We are on the draw. We have a one, a two, a two, and a three. It's an easy keep. We are in a best of one event. I think we're in round four. Let's see how this one goes. Leading off with the Legion's Landing once again. Against Black, we'll likely try to get Knight of Grace on the battlefield quickly. Another blue and black deck. So. If they play Golden Demise, it doesn't matter much what we do. If they play Ritual of Soot, it matters much what we do. So if I get out a Danto Vanguard, that can live through a Ritual of Soot. If I follow up the next turn with a Dauntless Bodyguard protecting a Knight of Grace, the Knight of Grace can live through a Ritual of Soot. Both are pretty good. So I'm going to go with the Vanguard. And we're going to get in there for a brutal one point here. And say go. I should have attacked first though before playing the Vanguard in case of Fungal Infection, which is a card you sometimes see these days. All right, now our opponent's le leaving up some sinister sabotage -y type mana. Let's attack and see what happens. All right, go for the Knight of Grace, get sabotaged. I suppose we have to get cards out of their hand somehow. We could pass the turn, but we really don't have a way to take advantage of them. So let's go for it. A 
Resolves. Okay, here's a bodyguard to try to protect that Knight of Grace. It does imply to me that there's a Ritual of Soot coming. So this may force a sabotage, and it does. An overgrown tomb. So a little bit of salt eye in your life. And will it be the ritual? It will. So Adanto will survive, thanks to the indestructibility. The other two, they must die, sadly. But there is a Johnny who can bring Knight of Grace right back, and that's what we're looking for. So with the opponent tapped out, sequencing isn't too important. A Johnny can come down, return Knight of Grace. Good to see. There's more work to do. And we can attack in with the Vanguard. Then if our opponent's holding cards like Cast Down, it doesn't really help them against Knight of Grace or Adanto Vanguard. Moment of Craving doesn't help them here, but helps them here. Vraska's Contempt doesn't help them here, but helps them here and here. Let's see how they want to use what I would guess is a Vraska's Contempt or an Eldest Reborn. I like the threat diversification of Ajani just to have a permanent on the battlefield that survives a sweeper. Something that would blow up all the creatures as well. In, a, in an aggressive white deck, it's kind of hard to find. All right, so now where you want to go up with the Johnny, we don't want to suicide a Johnny, so to speak. So we can target these two. After that, do we want to play the Benalish Marshal or the History of Benalia? The attack can bring the opponent potentially down to five. We could bring them down to three, making almost any threat lethal should it survive with the Benalish Marshal. But I do anticipate some kind of a Vraska's Contempt coming, probably on the Vanguard. So I think the history of Benalia is best here, as the Benalish Marshal at that point would only add one more power. And if that's going to happen anyway, I think that what I'll do is play the history of Benalia, and instead of putting plus one, plus one counters, oh, well, let's see what happens. Okay, sabotage. Well, that makes it clearer. I was going to put the history of the Ajani plus one, plus one counter on the knight instead of the Adanto Vanguard to play around a Vraska's Contempt, but now that I've made that play pre-combat, it does tip the hand of the opponent, and I know better how to play with the Ajani. And here's Assassin's Trophy. The target? Is it Ajani? Regardless, is it Ajani? It is. It must be. Okay. So, Ajani, this is going to get me another land, and pre-combat, that's a big deal, because, guess what? Here's the Vanalish Marshal coming down. So that was a serious, I think, mistake on the timing of that Assassin's Trophy. If you decided you're going after Ajani anyway, you could certainly wait till the end step to make that play instead. So that took advantage of a bit of a timing issue there. Another Ritual of Soot, but Dono Vanguard will survive. And slam. Okay, we are on the play with triple one drop, a two drop, a three, and a four. Unfortunately, the one land means I probably can't keep this. There are situations where you might try a one lander with the deck, but I don't see this as one of them. This is not a great hand either. We really have to hope to scry into or draw more one and two drop creatures to make our Loxodon good. But I think I have to try it as going much lower in a best of one seems like certain death. Ugh. Another bodyguard is not really what I wanted, but it is another creature and we do need those to make the Loxodon an option. Bodyguard guarding nothing. Feels bad, man. Uh-oh. And it's red, so this won't be close. Oh, bodyguard protecting a bodyguard. I can't really lose the creatures, though. I don't even want to trade them. I really do need to get the Loxodon down, but I can't do it next turn without... Yeah, there's just... Oh, wait. Yeah, I can. 
It's if I draw another one drop that I can make multiples. I can't play a two drop and play the Loxodon, but if they live, they're not going to live. Ugh. Really? We've got dub shocks? Just for the rubs? Maybe? No? Alright. Yeah, they didn't attack into the indestructible. They're brilliant. Alright, let's try a Knight of Grace. Can be a good brick wall if the opponent doesn't have removal. But it's red. All they play is removal. And this one plays Shiv and Fire. So, so weird. Alright, I'm still not blocking because my best hope is to get down a... a Loxodon somehow. Alright, now what's the play? Thinking about pumping their banneret. Makes for a pretty formidable 3-3 lava runner. <laughs> yep, yep, more stuff. Just endless shock it, burn it, kill it. That's what red does. I really hate red. I think I've made this clear to people over the years, but I hate red. No All right. Um, we could get the bodyguard, so at least one of our creatures would be indestructible and able to kill something next turn. Or we could get the Knight of Grace, which has more power. So, I'll take the Knight. Again. And I'll leave back the creatures, at least to try to dissuade an attack. But, I'm probably not going to protect a Johnny, to be honest. Jesus. <laughs> Every, every turn, every turn is exactly the same. Yep. Block, no blockers, damage. I will not be moved. And that's the worst draw that we could have had. Any creature, I think we, well, a two drop or a one drop we could have played and also been able to do stuff with the Loxodon, but there you go. Oh, what an ugly draw. We're still fighting, though. Still fighting. All right, at this point, I think I need to take out the Lava Runner. I don't know how else I'm going to. The Banneret I can trade just about any creature with. As long as I have something on the board, which is getting more and more sketch. All right, well, that's a good way to have a creature on the board. I'll also leave back both my creatures. I'll trade something with the Banneret. Prefer to trade this little Vigilant Knight, but at least we're not dead, or at least not taking a Goblin Beating to one more Shivan Fire or Shock, some nonsense like that. Mm-hmm. There you go. No attacks, love it. Ooh, there's a Loxy. The problem is I'm at seven. How the heck am I supposed to to play this and pump the squad when I'm at seven? I suppose I could leave two creatures up. So which creatures would I like to pump? I can have a 4-3, three, a 3-3, three, three, or 2-3-3 three, three Vigilant. I think I'll split the difference. So here comes Venerated Loxodon. Pumping on these two. Powering up the team. And that's that's enough for the Red Mage. Alright, for this hand we have landing bodyguard to protect it, a Loxodon if we draw one more creature, or I guess we could play it on three and that would be fine, and the Mighty Ajani. So I'll keep it. It looks fun. Opponent will mulligan. Yeah, but they'll keep their second with one on top, so we can't anticipate a competitive game. Since they only did one mulligan, they're on the draw, and they kept their hand on top. 
It's closer to even than it looks. I said kept their hand. Kept their scry on top. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. It's mono blue. Well, let's bodyguard our little token. And send in the beats. The next turn is a crucial one. If they go with Curious Obsession and we go with Loxodon, we'll have so much power on the battlefield that their card advantage may not matter. If, however, they leave up a counterspell and counter the Loxodon, well, then they may still have plenty of time. However, do I even go for Loxodon in that situation? Hmm, because we already have a faster clock than they do. But... What if they play a Merfolk Trickster? Then they eat our 1-1 token, and they have a faster clock. Since I have two Loxodons, I think it best to push them and make them have their counter spells. I think there's too many ways that they turn the race around. And they do have an Essence Scatter. Easy game. And we'll pass the turn this time. Right. Anything else? Attack for one and a herald. Okay. Opponent with more counter spells available. The Johnny is tough here. It's not really. He ain't much of a survivor against flyers and unblockables. But if we eat a counter spell with him, I'll probably be happy about that. If he does resolve, we get these sweet counters so we can attack into and through a Merfolk Trickster. So let's try it. All right. I understand you are in need of support. Yep, support it is. Support, I believe, was a card that put a plus one, plus one counter on up to two creatures. So I think there's a hidden little cheeky Ajani joke in there. And yeah, there's your trickster. So, I think I'll leave this back to try to dissuade the trickster from attacking a Johnny and try to get more buffs with a Johnny. Which feels weird, but I think in this case isn't a bad idea. If we end up blocking the trickster, we can use bodyguard to indestructible and keep our life linker. Okay. So do I go for that play? I guess the issue is another Merfolk Trickster taking away the Indestructible, and I lose both creatures. That would be very bad. On the other hand, I could let a Johnny go to one. Yeah, I don't know how many buffs I plan to really get out of a Johnny anyway. I could also make the trade and not bodyguard protect. That's fine. I think that's totally I think that's totally reasonable. Then we play another creature that might resolve, and if not, we can get it back with the Ajani minus. Lash out all you want. Alright, another little dorky flyer. Down to one card in hand. Another Loxodon. All right. Do we resolve a Knight of Grace? We do. The Johnny pumping the squad. You are capable of more than. All right, let's start attacking. Now that we can't block anything anyway. And it's on. Our opponent could have a Curious Obsession, that would take a Johnny off the board, but if they're attacking a Johnny, they're not attacking me, which means the race is going our way, little by little. They keep on top with the Surveil. Feels like that's a Counterspell, or a Tempest Jin. And another Miscloaked Herald. The opponent's finding plenty of unblockable creatures. Now, do I want to play a Loxodon and tap my things to make them bigger? Not really, to be honest. What I prefer to do this time 
is keep attacking. And I might, I'm just gonna five mana four four is what I'm going to do. But I want to pressure this life total and try to make this game end quickly. Get them chump blocking. That's how we deal with the blue creatures. We can't block them. Yep, just a good old five mana four four. Limited rock star, but you do what you gotta do. It's still bigger than anything they offer. Gotta feel like the only cards I'd keep on top there would be Trickster and Tempest Shin. Oh, they kept a Curious Obsession. Okay. I mean, it is a crucial card. It just seems like it's late to the party now. Okay, they're leaving themselves dead on board. So... They're looking for Trickster pretty bad. They've been a dive down because it won't help them. Finished. <laughs> Lash out all you want. And I. All right. They don't appear to have a blocker yet, but let's see if they have a Trickster. Go to attacks. Send the team. Flip my landing. Well, that's good enough. All right, looking at an opening hand of Landing, Aspirant, Knight, another Loxodon, and an Ajani. The Ajani's have been in so many opening hands, it's amazing. But I will, I will hang on to this. And let's lead with the 2-1 since we're on the play. Let's try to get more damage in with an early attack or two. Perhaps the opponent isn't ready to block Watery Grave. The Watery Graves have been out and about today. Let's get a Knight of Grace onto the battlefield. Let's send in the Aspirant. The pressure is going to be very high in the game. Uh, next turn we can Legion's Landing and Loxodon if these both survive the turn. Thought Erasure could mess that up. And is the common turn to play, but not here. Well, they could have a Counterspell. But I don't know enough about what's going on with their deck yet, so I'm not going to really play around much. I'm hoping what it is is a moment of graving that's sort of holding things up, at which point it's a little too late to play now that the Loxodon is on the stack. And it's an important reason when you play against these decks to use your moment of craving in your main phase. Yep. If they had used it on their turn or on my upkeep, something like that, the Loxodon would still be in my hand. You've got to think about that Convoke. So this is now out of Golden Demise range. This is out of Ritual of Soot range. And a Johnny dodges both if it's allowed to resolve. Blood Operative. Okay. Well, they've got a creature that gets some lifelink. It does pump up a Knight of Grace, and it doesn't have good blocks against the other creatures here. We draw a Dauntless Bodyguard. I think that the right play is a Johnny, because then we flip the landing, then we play the Bodyguard. And let's pump up the creatures that are already too big for the Operative. The Operative will trade with this Vampire, likely no matter what, so let's increase the damage we do. So, operative, probably trading with this vampire. Then we bodyguard and protect our, what would you say? The Knight of Grace? Because then a Ritual Soot can't kill it either. Or the Loxodon because it's a bigger body. Oh my, they, they took all the damage. I'm going to protect the Knight of Grace. That makes sense to me. And yeah, it's a really good draw. The opponent will need counterplay, the likes of which I don't know what it could be. Possibly doing some math here about how much damage they'll take on the next turn. Mm, 
no attacks. And pass of the turn, stuck on three land. So, all right, they're going to scoop it up. I was gonna say, when they're holding off, they must have something, so a Johnny trying to decide to put counters on the smaller creatures or the bigger ones, probably on the smaller ones in that case, even though you might lose one of them. Another opener, another trifecta of planes, some cheap creatures, and a venerated Loxodon. This time going with a Conclave Tribunal. It's not the greatest hand. We don't have any of our powerful three drops. No Benelish Marshall, no History of Benalia, no Ajani, but I'll give it a try. Those cards are in the deck. Hopefully they'll roll off the top. Well, Snoopy, what's up? Evil Snoopy over here. Oh boy. Everybody's favorite. Would you like to attack with that too? When people make fun of my pace of play in the YouTube comments, I feel like they have no idea how many people play uh, like this. <laughs> I ain't my fault. Right now you can go up there. The world is so at your fingertips, viewers. It is kind of amazing the power you have. You can go into that little options thing and you can put this on 2x speed whenever you want to. Is that too fast for you? Try one and a half X, maybe 1.25 X. Knock yourself out. We'll play the Snubborn Sentry because the bodyguard would die much easier. At least if we put this out protecting something, it can say it does something. All right. Well, Red, for your next trick, will it be a lightning strike? What, what, what are we doing here? Oh, some Wizard's Lightning instead. Yes, the variety. Mm, good variety pack there. All right, let's make a dork. And let's guard a dork. We really need these to survive one turn one time. Red has a tendency of just burning everything they see. Makes it tough. I mean, I'm sure something will die in this transaction. It's like, will it be one creature or both? And I'll be here when they decide. I'll, I'll be right here, my friends. I wish I could hit the 2x speed button on YouTube right now. Quite a bit. I would prefer that. Runaway Steamkin. Lava Runner. Pump your Steamkin. Yep, here we go. Firebrand the Bodyguard. Yep, don't let me untap with it, heaven forbid. I'll sack it, make my token indestructible so you don't want to attack because I would just gain a life from your attack. And there it is. Turn complete. Adano Vanguard, not the place you wanna be. I'm going to Conclave Tribunal away the runaway Steamkin before very, very bad things happen. Our opponent on the bright side they only have two cards left. Another spell would take it to beating down with two two lava runners instead of one ones. We have kind of a non-creature in our hand, a very sad vanguard, a two mana one one. The rest of the text is not as relevant. Ah, oh, Snoopy. Snoopy. Come on now, Snoopy. Snoopy come home. This is a heartbreaking animated peanuts special that you could watch if you wanted to suffer. Well, they've opted on land attack go. I think it's time to get out my Adanto Vanguard and I'll try to attack with this little token to gain a life back. And dear God, let me untap. For all the, all the beatings we've taken in the early game and the awkwardness of our draw, our opponent is sitting on a pair of 1-2s, four lands. Uh, they, they, you could argue they're a bit flooded. We've seen four lands and four spells. And we have a chance to untap and play some powerful things. So 
We're not out of it yet. I think it just feels like the game is further along than it is because of, well, because of this. Because of the rope monster. You're on zero timeouts. You gotta make your play. You wouldn't want to just pass the turn and not get to do your thing. Oh, I see. This is probably some kind of assault mine because they've drawn all land off the top. Well, I've been there. I actually have. Let's get this going. Now I have a 4-4 and my creatures are out of Chain Whirler range. Start to breathe a little better. How do you deal with the 4-4, Snoopy? Wake up from your nap. Get off your doghouse. See if you can deal with a 4-4. <laughs> do you think there's like a Snoopy Red Baron connection? Wants to be a Red Baron. Therefore, play red. A fanatical firebrand off the top. The last card is almost, yep, certainly a land. Because they would have played any other card that they could have. So, it was kind of an easy one. Easy mode giveaway there. Let's play our Dauntless Bodyguard. And protect our vampire because of the lifelink. Yeah, there's nothing for that fire fanatical firebrand to do here. Absolutely nothing. And yet, and yet, so much to be thought about. The Firebrand can trade with the Bodyguard once it hits the table. I'm going to try to use it to play a Loxodon. And the opponent can kill it in response, but we get another Loxodon. We could also get that life by attacking now and flipping the landing now instead of playing a Loxodon. But I prefer to make them use up that Firebrand. Oh, I know. I can just keep the 2-2. Two, two. I can attack with that, and then I can pump off the others. Alright. And we need to do it now, so that we don't go to combat and then have the Firebrand sack and kill the Bodyguard. But they do not kill the Bodyguard. Ain't that something? Well, let's send the Life Linker. Let's gain that life. No blocks. We'll want to save this tribunal. Hopefully we can hit another... Yep, there's the card we need to hit. I was about to say. Either another Steamkin or a, a Frenzy, which is the card that gets them back in the game, kinda. Shock on the bodyguard. Sack, protect. Protect the life linker. All right, they passed the turn. We'll save blowing up Frenzy till after combat. Before combat, let's send the pain. Get this game moving towards a conclusion. Oh, that chillaxing music while we wait for red mages. All right, Fanatical Firebrand will block the Adanto. Then I'm sure it will shoot a point of damage to the face. The trade will occur with the Life Linker. The 2-2 will absorb a 5-5. It's all pretty good trades for us. And now the Brutal Tribunal. No more Frenzy. Kindling Phoenix. It's a good draw. It is a good draw. Alright, let's play another landing. Let's make another creature. Let's pump all of it and just go super wide on the Phoenix. We could have got our opponent to a very low life total. But I like it just completely overwhelming this poor bird. Lightning strike your face and concede. Well, that decision didn't take so long. How sincerely appropriate. Our final battle, our boss battle in this uh, 
seven game event is against the Nine Tails. You Naruto fans know of which I speak. All right, Lanoir Elf to launch the party. Sky Marcher Aspirant from my side. Always want to play the bodyguard to protect something. And is this going to be Big Green? Big Green is scary. It can just go harder than we do. We don't have that much to deal with a Galta. All right, so do I do double creatures, then Benalia here? Feels like the Knight of Grace could be very useful. And I don't want to attack with a Sky Marcher Aspirant. I need to ascend with it so I get some evasive attacking in. Steel Leaf Champ, rut row. But the opponent, a little short on mana. Still, we need a solution to a Galta, as that is going to be the big problem. Let's get the history of Benalia going. The sooner we can attack with large knights, the better. Obviously, Steel Leaf Champ is also a quick clock. And there is Galta. Holy smokes. This is where the con War Conclave Tribunals would help. Sure, Wild Growth Walker Stompy. All right. A little double block, getting a Pelt Collector off the battlefield. And down to 12. That is not a Conclave Tribunal. This is not going to be one of those games with a happy ending. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see a chance in hell of pulling this off. Well, we can show that we also could have got drawed if we'd gone a little bit firster. <laughs> if only, and if and only if. Hiya! Alright, I'll let you do your thing. Hiya! Well, sometimes you eat the bar. Sometimes the bar eats you. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the mono white deck. Not the most crafty of decks, very much a straightforward blunt instrument. And uh, it can be fun. It can be a good budget option, although there's a lot of rares and mythics to it, but at least you don't have to spend those on lands. Um, if white aggro is your style, it can be a good way to go. I would recommend the decks from the Pro Tour more. Obviously, the pros put a lot more work and thought into the decks than I have the time to do to any specific color. But as far as getting the color challenge done, uh, this did the job for me. Thank you very much for watching the video. As always, I will see you in the next video.